everyone, I am Rini Zulia from the ASEAN Soggy Caucus. Welcome to the Hear Queer Stories podcast series with the theme of intersecting rainbows, progress, challenges, and solidarity within the queer movements. This podcast series is created by ASEAN Soggy Caucus, which aims at magnifying voices of queer blinks communities in Southeast Asia. We hope this can help strengthen the communities despite the adversities and difficult events they face. In the making of this podcast series, we collaborated with three young Indonesian activists, Ayunita, Purba, and Krishna. This episode is hosted by Ayunita. Hello Queer Brings, I'm Ayunita. In this episode, I would like to explore and understand the progress of the LGBTIQ plus political movement in Thailand, including the challenges that still persist. Uh, for some brief, I would like to inform you that the LGBTIQ plus political movement in Thailand is growing force for change in recent years. Uh, there has been a significant increase in activism and advocacy for LGBTIQ plus rights. And this has led them to some important gains. And now joining me today is Bloom, one of the prominent queer activists in Thailand. Hello, Bloom. How are you? Hello. Hello. Um, I'm good. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to... Uh, uh, introduce yourself to our listeners. Okay. Hello, my name is Bloom, and my pronouns are they, he. I'm from I'm the, I'm from Nome, Thailand, and I'm acting as the head of International Relations Unit. Besides that, I'm also I'm also working for I'm working I'm also working as a HIV AIDS officer from Youth Voices Council as well. So nice to meet you all. Terima kasih. Okay, nice to meet you too. Uh, are you ready for some question or we are talking about the LGBTIQ plus political movement today for our listener and with me? Yep, I'm ready. Okay. Yep. Okay, maybe for the first very start uh, question uh, for you, Bloom, uh, what are the key milestones in the history of the LGBTIQ plus political movement in Thailand if you may share with us? Maxi Ayunita for this question. Yeah. So, so far, first of all, our marriage equality bill is now in the cabinet, waiting for the approval from the from from the from the cabinet and the senate. This is the result of more than 20 years of our hard work and our casse, which we are trying to lobby with progressive political parties and the mainstream society. Yeah. Secondly, oh. We finally have the Gender Equality Act 2015, which aims to address gender-related and LGBTQ-related discrimination. Despite this, the bill is not that effective when it comes to implementation. For example, the clause in the bill states that the exception of the discrimination is under the basis of national security or morality. In other words, if there, is, if there is a discrimination that is framed under the cause for quote and quote national security or morality, the bill would wipe that. It became the loop, loophole of the law. Thirdly, I'm so proud to say this, Thailand is the first Southeast Asian nation that finally have openly queer MPs representing in our parliament. The first one was Pick of Tanya Varin. They were the first openly queer and trans MP from the Future Forward Party at that time, which is now Move Forward Party, Thailand's most progressive party. However, Pick of was banned from becoming the MP due to the accusation of them around holding a shareholder with a media company, with, with a media company, which is which excusing by the military junta at that time. Hmm. Yep, okay, thank you for the um explanation that uh, in the very first question that's very encouraging to hear about the progress uh, being made in Thailand LGBT movement, but also uh, for me it's disappointing to hear about golf being banned. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you said that 
uh, number of 20 years for the advocacy which is trying to lobby uh, with progressive political parties and the mainstream society now what are some key areas that require continue attention and advocacy for the uh, advocacy in their group yeah ka. uh-huh the answer is legal gender recognition lgr ka. Why? Oh. It's because why most Thai people will, if you come to Thailand and you ask aunties, uncles, whether you will, whether they will support marriage mm-hmm. court review, the majority, the majority of them will say yes. However, when it comes to legal gender recognition, legal gender recognition many mm-hmm. Thais still have misconception around that. For example, people misunderstand that Oh, I'm afraid of legal gender recognition because it would allow people to cheat others more if they could, if they are able to change their gender identity, which is not true. Right now, CSO such as us, the Minority Thailand, are adopting our legal gender recognition view that is more inclusive to not just for binary transgender but also for non-binary and intersex people as well. Mm. Do you think that's the major challenges that facing the LGBT IQ plus political movement or any uh, challenge that uh, still persists today? The, the office of the office answer is our political insta- instability. Due to the legacy of dictatorship in this nation for almost 100 years. Mm-hmm. As a result, it impairs our queer rights movements and other movements in Thailand. For those queer beings outside of Thailand, for those who are unfamiliar with our political context, Thailand has the highest numbers of groups. In, not just in Southeast Asia, but in the world as well. I think we rank the third in the world. Mm-hmm. Consequently, our parliament has been ruled by a military dictator for almost 100 years, backed by the, the monarchy's institution. Recently, with our general election in May, Thailand's most progressive party moved forward, which promised marriage equality and decriminalizing sex work won the election. However, the senators appointed by the dictator didn't allow the party to become the the prime minister or and to rule the Thailand's government. Plus, Pita Lim Chalun who is running for the prime minister candidate from the from the party, the Move Forward Party, recently has been banned from participating this from from running for the politics by the senators as well. The senators appointed by the dictator. It is all the dictator's cunning. Recently, a few days ago, um, on 22nd of mm-hmm. August, we just got the new government, which is the coalition with military junta parties. They are set up by the, the dictator's appointed senator's votes. But hence, they are not from the our vote, Thai citizen. With the recent development, it anchors, it anchors Thai people. Mm. And they, it made the uh, Thai people anger. And what, 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 uh, what was they do? So right now, apparently, Thai people, especially CSOs, are collecting the signature for the petition to admin the the constitution around election because the recent constitution around the election which is dropped which 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 was created by the dictator around that to happen so they are getting many signatures as they could to file the petition to amend that constitution okay yeah Speaking of that, you 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 mentioned that Peter Lim Charendra, uh, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mind to give context about him? 
ลับเชือนิทาลิมเจริญลัด is the um head is the head of move forward party who's now being banned as I mentioned banned from participating in the politics by the by the senators he's very young like 40 years old and he's considered to be one of the most progressive politician in Thailand however despite despite his good name he also known for his scandal around physical assault his former wife and took and took the custody of of his former wife's child hence activists and those who work with him for policies around gender discrimination are trying to address his scandal try to call out this speaking of young people because we talk about pita uh, i'm curious uh, what is it like to be young thai queer living in thailand for you okay <laughs> as a young people in not thailand sure, you're not sure I call myself <laughs> young because i'm 30, i just turned 30 <laughs> okay but for us but for us this with definition i'll call myself young because i don't i haven't reached 35 years <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be biased here. Uh -huh. oh, saya orang muda. But anyway. Yeah, uh, orang muda. Uh, <laughs> we can start at 50. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, uh, we can be basically what is like being orang muda or orang muda um, yeah. or young yeah. person. Uh, basically, we can be visibly queer, superficially, um, in a in a form of like so say of visibility, we can be visibility queer for a superficial level. However, we are still facing discrimination, discrimination from employment, healthcare, employment, healthcare, education, mm -hmm. and even from our family, or obviously political participation that I mentioned. Uh, some who are young, very young, like not even reached to 18 years old, and who are so vocal against the dictator and involved with political protests might be kicked out from their conservative families for speaking up as well. I have seen some of um, very young queer being had to have to leave their home and stay somewhere else because they are being queer and involved in politic involved in protest against the dictator. Bloom, maybe we, 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 we can uh moving forward as far yeah. as I know, uh young people are the biggest users of social media in their respective countries and uh little bit uh for the um, brief I want to tell you a little uh, a little about Indonesian queer who are quite passive in using uh, the internet and social media to provide education about queer. The, my question is, how has the internet and social media helped to advance the cause of LGBT IQ plus rights in Thailand? Oh, um, the internet here and social media yeah. play yeah. a big role in mobilizing our activism for queer rights movement in Thailand. Ka? For example, how marriage equality bill could finally be submitted to the cabinet is because of the online campaign from CSO and from the Move Forward Party as well. Also, also that also the online petition that gathers like. 40,000 signature to support marriage equality bill too. Mm -hmm. Also, the movement of non-binary rights in Thailand happened because of social media as well, because non-binary Thailand, we were the first non-binary group in Thailand that started our Facebook page and we gained like... Um, in, 11,000 likes and wow. more than 10k plus followers cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the social media is Facebook, only Facebook or anything else? Uh, even for our for our group right now, Mary Thailand. For Mary Thailand, for Facebook, for Facebook is the most active and we got Instagram as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I just know about that. 
Okay. And then what what is the role of the uh, yes now you talk you you explain about the what uh, uh, the people in Thailand using how the the people in Thailand using social media to advance uh, the cause of LGBT rights. But here now I want to, to know about what is the role of the Thai government in promoting or hindering LGBT IQ plus rights. <laughs> I'm gonna sound honest to you. The yeah. government has mostly hindered the rights of LGBTQ people in this nation. Mm-hmm. This is due to, as I mentioned, the prolonged legacy of dictator- dictatorship in Thailand. As a result, a number of queer activists who are vocally pro-democracy, because we believe queer rights movement go together with democracy. They have to go together in order to make our rights happened, have been jailed for speaking out against the dictator and monarchy. Mm-hmm. One of them is Wan Chalung. They have been forced disappear. They have been in, in they have been in forced disappeared for two years and we had no idea whether they were alive or dead. Mm-hmm. Regarding Regarding a few progress that I mentioned earlier from the first question, it was contributed by the ministries rather than the government. It's because it was their job to make those ro- make those bills happen, not the dictator. And how those progress happened, like the, the for example, the gender equality bill happened because of our CSO, we pushed those to happen too. Okay, were CSO doing something for one chair, one chair room? Sorry, uh, can you repeat that again? Yeah, uh, was the CSO uh, doing something uh, for chair, one chair room? Right now, right now, from what I know, because it has been two years already that they are disappeared. So we have been looking for them. And if I am an if I remember this correctly, I'm not Amnesty International Thailand is still calling out Thai government about the disappearance of one child. Mm, okay. All right. Uh then the next question. <laughs> what are the key issues that currently being debated within the LGBTIQ uh, community in Thailand? The main thing- Okay. The main debate within our own queer communities in this nation, and it's like very heated, de- heat debated, is trans exclusionary trans exclusionary feminist movement, or known as TERF movement, because some try to deny that TERF doesn't exist in Thailand by claiming that well. Trans women are highly visible in this nation, so TERF doesn't happen in this nation. Actually, TERF exists in Thailand, but in a more implicit way, unlike in the West. Because what's happening in Thailand is that many cisgender women, many cisgender women try to exclude try to exclude trans women from their from their women's rights movement. And in reality, in Thailand, in within our queer activism, even though we see the visibility of trans women, however, we rarely see a trans woman in Thailand holds a high position within CSOs or NGO, such as as a director or manager, is very, very rare. Because within our activism, most most of queer rights space, especially in a high position, dominated by cisgender queer women or cisgender men activists. And also furthermore, if a trans woman is poor or sex worker, and if they don't fit into the binary standard of beauty, they tend to be heavily marginalized too. Hence, um, not in, Hence, we need to combat turf movement within our within our communities. All right. Hmm. 
I heard that very unfortunate, but also I just remember it also happens in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, the different is that as far still but it is uh, debating about the use of syllables between uh, trans laki laki or priawan, uh, trans laki laki and priawan. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you heard about that. It means both syllables are trans men if we translate in English, right? And yeah, this had become a, a debate until their activism when their spreads way. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the. I don't know. Maybe it's now is more progressive. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Bloom, what are the prospects for further progress in LGBTIQ plus rights in Thailand in the years to come? I would say right now, most likely, most likely, even to as I mentioned, we got the government with we with most which most Thai people are not satisfied with, but despite that. Most likely, the marriage equality bill would be passed soon, even within this government. However, better pass in what way? That's up to the people. That's up to the future. But it there might be. But it's most likely that even though the marriage equality bill might pass, it might comes as like certain conditions or something. Or luckily, if it if it passed, there wouldn't be no certain restriction. But we have to wait and see what's happening because, as I mentioned, our political situation is quite what's the word? Trickle change a lot and can be inse insecure as well. Okay, all right. And then, uh, what can be done to address the the discrimination and violence faced by LGBTIQ plus people in Thailand. Okay. Obviously, we need to strengthen the laws and legal protection and mechanism in order to protect the rights of queer people in Thailand. Then we need to train government officers and law, enfor law enforcement to be more queer friendly in order to implement laws and legal protection more effectively. More effectively, what's the point if we have a good law, but the those who are implement those who are implementers are queer phobic? Okay. Uh, does the KSO have the strategy to train government and uh, government uh? Government officer and law enforcement to be more queer friendly. Yeah, yeah. Does the KSO have the strategy about that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any strategy about that, right? Yeah. Okay. So far, um, CSOs, we try to, we try to, we try to tend like um government officers around queer inclusions. Also, I know that in the past, some CSO try to work with the Ministry of Education to, to what's the word, um, to update our sex, our, our sex education on Thailand textbooks to be more queer inclusive. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is one of the questions that I'm curious to uh, about what are the challenges of being an out LGBTIQ plus person in Thailand? I think it's similar with the previous question, but I can frame it in a <laughs> different way. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, obviously that um, if we can be we can be out and we're very queer, but we still face discrimination from left and right. Um, mm -hmm. The way it happens is not as explicit as our neighbor. So it's more implicit. Also, as Thailand still lacks of marriage equality and legal gender recognition, of course, we still face discrimination on a daily basis, but in a more implicit way. All right, Bloom. Uh, I just asked you about the challenges for being an out LGBTIQ plus person in Thailand. It's very encouraging to uh, hear about that and then uh, now, what are the opportunities for LGBTIQ plus plus people in Thailand today? First of all, as I mentioned from earlier that 
that that marriage quality bill in Thailand would most likely would be passed soon in the mm-hmm. future. But in what ways we have to wait and see and hoping for the best. And it will be our CSO who following the process, also Thai citizens too. Secondly, the good news is the legal gender recognition bill submitted by the Move Forward Party has just been submitted to the cabinet waiting for the read in the parliament in the future. The bill has been also has been supervised, contributed by non by us non binary Thailand too. And thirdly, oh yeah, by the way, we also we also we were last we were also invited to provide our feedback to the move forward party regarding the their legal gender recognition bill at, in, in Thailand's parliament too last week. And lastly, in the future, Thai, Thailand, well, Bangkok would host the world plight in the future. I think it's next year, if I'm not mistaken. So that our queer brings from Southeast Asia, such as Indonesia, could come to Bangkok for the world plight without paying for a visa. Okay, wow. I'm so eager for the third uh, world part. World, what word pride right, right. right. thank you bloom finally and uh thank you for your sharing and thank you for your valuable valuable insight into the challenges faced by the lgbtiq plus movement in thailand as well as the progress that has been achieved and also until next time i'm ayunita urging you to keep exploring keep questioning and keep conversing For those who want to listen to other episodes, follow ASEAN SOGI Caucus on Facebook and Twitter at ASEAN SOGI and on Instagram at ASEAN SOGI Caucus. This podcast is produced under Creative Commons license. Terima kasih, thank you. Thank you, terima kasih belum.